Dolly works great on flat ground, but stairs, not so much. Hey everybody, Kyle here with Spicer Designs. No funny intro today, because frankly, there's nothing funny about storm season or being without power. Let's just get that straight, right meow. Welcome back to the channel. Today's video, I'm gonna need all the time I can get, so we're gonna keep this part short and sweet. Damn it. I'm not using that anyway. So what you see behind me is the Anchor Solix Smart Home Power Kit. Comes with the F3800, the transfer switch, and a 12 space main lug only sub panel. And they also give you a 100 amp breaker. This is all Eaton. I'm not a big fan of Eaton. So we're actually not going to be using this sub panel in our home. And you can also add these expansion battery packs to get you up to 53.8 kilowatt hours of capacity, which is kind of crazy. Also, crazy expensive. Who the left the outside lights on keystone girl now i already made a video talking about all the features and specs on the f3800 so we're not going to get into those details again i'll leave a link for that video down in the description or you can just go to their website which i'll also have a link for in the description and it'll give you all the specs all the details that you need just like any other website today we're going to be focusing on installing the system for home backup power which i think most people that's what they're interested in and as most of you know i am an electrician by trade I've been doing this for almost 20 years. I've installed many Generac and Kohler gas backup systems. So I know what the hell I'm doing. And we're gonna go through this installation step by step so you know exactly what you're getting into if you decide to go with one of these systems. I think I'm saying systems a lot. System. Again, not a lot of time. Let's get down to the mechanical room and get started. All right, let's take a look at the setup down here. You can see I got the DeWalt light stand because the lighting kind of sucks. Got a table set up here with some of the parts and pieces and the panels. We'll look at that in a second. And into the mechanical room. We've got the panel. I already pulled the cover off. The anchor sole looks in the expansion pack. You got a piece of wood there. My tools. Now this looks like a little bit of a cluster. Uh, it's actually a lot better than I was expecting. I did not build this house. I did not install this panel. But for being Romex, they didn't do too bad of a job. Gets a little uh, wiry when you get up in the scissor joist there, but it's overall not too bad. This is actually not my first means of disconnect, so this is considered a sub-panel, and they did do it right. I do have a separate ground bar in here. They did not install the bonding screw, so everything was done correctly that I could see so far. Now, this is a Square D QO panel. These are my favorite panels. And the reason being is because they place the neutral bars up here on the sides. Unlike the home line panels, they place them behind all of the breakers right alongside them. And uh, they're kind of a pain to get to. Not a big fan. So I'm glad we have a QO panel. And that's what we're going to be using for our new emergency backup panel as well, which is going to mount right there. Now bear with me on this video. This is a pretty tight room. The lighting isn't that great. Not going to be a lot of very good camera angles, but I will do my best. The main thing is going to be the information, the detailed installation, so, sorry. The first thing that we're gonna do is figure out the placement of everything. Because you have to keep in mind, the way these cords plug in, you can't just put the two units right next to each other. And what I mean by that is, eventually one day I'd like to get another one of these units, but first I wanna test the system out, make sure I like it, before I commit to buying a second one. But I want to plan for it. So this is going to plug in right into the side. Okay, so I want to see about how much room we have, how tight this is going to be. Let's say this tight as we can go is about 9 inches. And then this cord is going to plug into the bottom of that transfer switch. We'll look at that in a second. I'm going to refer to the anchor home power panel as the transfer switch because that's really what it is. You can see in the bottom of this, there are two different ports. This is for if you have two F3800s. We only have one of them, so we're only going to use power station one. And that is where the other end of this cable plugs into is right there. Tight quarters here. Is that battery dying? Oh God, I looked right into it. Now I can't see shit. Now once we get all of this equipment installed, then it's all plug and play from there. Pretty easy. Here is the sub panel that I purchased. Again, they give you an Eaton panel, main lug only, 12 spaces. This is also a main lug only panel, but it is a square D 
QO panel, which is exactly what I have in there for my main panel. And they both use the same breakers, which is a big reason I wanted to use another Square D QO panel. Because all of the breakers that I pull out of my main panel, I can reuse in the new emergency backup panel, so I don't have to buy new breakers. So first things first, let's mount the sub panel, get it in place, and then we'll look at mounting the transfer switch. Okay, before we get started, I have to say this, safety glasses, they are a must, and cut resistant gloves, definitely preferred. Now this isn't necessarily a how-to video. I would not recommend a DIYer taking on this job unless you are fully confident in your electrical skills. Ideally, you're gonna wanna hire a professional electrician to do this installation. The point of this video is for reference purposes only, just so you know what you're getting yourself into. Now, this panel, is energized. I'm going to work in it energized. I'm not going to shut it off. I'm also an electrician. I've been doing it for 20 years. I don't care if you live in a different country and you don't ever work on energized equipment. You don't need to tell me that in the comments. I don't care. I personally know what I'm doing. I've done this many, 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 many times. But I do not recommend that you do it. Make sure everything is shut off. Take all safety precautions possible. All the safety police, keep the comments to yourself. I don't care. Moving on. We are going to mount this sub panel right next to our main panel. Couple reasons for this. All of the circuits that I want to relocate from the main panel into the emergency backup panel, I will be able to pull them completely out of the main panel and simply move them over and now feed them into the emergency backup panel. Okay, so we have the emergency backup sub panel installed, and you see that I just mounted this piece of three quarter inch plywood. It's always good rule of thumb, and in most places it's code to put a piece of wood or something on the concrete. You're not supposed to mount a panel or a disconnect directly to the concrete, so that's what we've got here. The next step now is to mount the Anchor Solix transfer switch or the home power panel whatever. In order to do that, they give you this bag of hardware, which has some like two inch lag bolts and some sleeve anchors for the concrete. We're not going to be using any of these. They also give you the small screws that you need to attach these brackets, which we will need. And <coughs> gloves. Stupid. I'm only going to use the gloves when I'm working in the panel. Otherwise, I'm not. With this transfer switch, they give you these brackets. Two of them mount to this wood right here. The other two mount to the back of the transfer switch and then you kind of hook them on and bolt them together. And after pulling this thing apart and looking at it, I understand why. In this upper section here is where all of the electrical components are. They really don't want you opening that thing up, sticking a drill in there, trying to drill a hole so you can just run a screw through the back of this thing into the wood. That's why everything's done externally. Ideally, if they had some mounting ears on this thing, that would probably have been the best way because these brackets kind of overcomplicated things here. Did they give you a template or something? What? 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 <laughs> there is a template. There's nothing I hate worse than a freaking template. Okay, four brackets total. Two of them have two holes. Those are the ones that are gonna mount to the wood. The other two have three holes. Those mount to the back of the transfer switch. All right, we have all of our equipment mounted, the transfer switch and the emergency sub panel. On this transfer switch, you can see underneath, we have our line side terminals and the load side terminals. So from our main panel, we're gonna come off that with a 100 amp two pole breaker. 
It's gonna come in and feed these line side terminals. Then we're gonna come out off the load side terminals and we're going to feed the main lugs on the emergency sub panel. So now in order to run all the wire in between all of these different boxes here, I need to run some conduit. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm not gonna get into specific detail about that because there's many different ways that you can do it. I'm gonna do it in conduit. So I'll set you up on a time lapse and then we'll talk about it once I get it installed. All right, we got all the conduit ran. Everything is perfectly level. Got all of our plastic bushings in there. We've got our inch and a quarter chase between the two panels just in case I need it, it's there. The sub panel, we've got our ground bars installed because this is still a sub panel, just like this one. And down below, I have a piece of half inch EMT running over to a box. That is going to be a dedicated outlet for charging the F3800. And you may have noticed there's another three quarter right here. I'll show you what that is for in a second as well. So we're gonna be running some number four gauge THHN copper wire. Number four is actually only good up to 95 amps, but there is an exception for residential use. They allow you to bump that up to the next common breaker size, which is a 100 amp. So we're gonna be installing this number four on the 100 amp to feed the anchor Solix transfer switch. Then we'll also be using the number four to come out of the load side to feed our new emergency sub panel. And for 100 amps, you need a number six ground. So we'll be pulling a number six ground to the switch and from here to the sub panel. The other thing to keep in mind when you're installing your transfer switch and your sub panel is it's not going to necessarily be this involved. The way that our basement is set up, this is kind of what I have to do. Otherwise, I would probably have put the transfer switch right here. And then just to the right of it, I would have put this sub panel. So I'm going to get all of this installed. It'll be easier to explain it once you can see it done. Cue the time lapse. All right, now that I have all that wire pulled and phased, which is very important, you want to have at least two phasing stripes for each phase. I ran out of white tape, so I ended up using silver in place of it. I will come back and replace it with white tape. So the first thing is we're gonna terminate on the transfer switch terminals. These terminals require a lug. So I have a number four burndy lug with a quarter inch hole on it. We will need a crimper in order to crimp this on to the end of the wire. I will leave links for this crimper down in the description. It's fairly inexpensive. It's just kind of a cheap knockoff one. 
but it works. We'll also need this crimper for the number six ground wire as well. We have to put a lug on that also. So here is our lug. Basically, we're gonna want to hold it up to our wire, kind of get an idea of how much we need to strip. Kind of use my finger to mark it. And I'll use my utility knife, score this, and there we go. And your lug will slide right on the end. Little tiny bit of copper shown, that's okay. We can always go back and put a little bit of electrical tape over that. On these Burndy lugs, there are multiple colored stripes. However many stripes there are on that lug is how many times you're supposed to crimp it. And you would crimp it right on the stripe. We're gonna put our number four dies in here. Okay, hopefully you can see that. Okay, there we go. You can see it is crimped. I'm gonna go ahead and do that to the rest of these things and then we'll go ahead and land them and torque them down. All right, we have all of our ends crimped on with the exception of the load side ground. They literally ran out. This was the last number six lug. So I had to stick a number four lug on there. This is only temporary. I have another one on order and I will go ahead and replace that. So the reason we're gonna terminate this side first is because it's a little bit more tedious. That way I could shove all the excess wire on the other end. It's a little bit easier to terminate and I can comb these in nice and get them landed. So that's what we're gonna do right now. Get them formed in there. First thing, I wanna pull out all of these screws. These are 10 millimeter bolts with a Phillips head in them. And the torque spec on them is five Newton meters or 3.6 foot pounds of torque, which that's what we're gonna be doing. Probably ideally you want inch pounds, but I don't have a torque wrench with inch pounds. As long as you have them snug, you'll be fine. I am gonna tape up these lugs. Some 33. You can see why this would be a pain if you terminated this last. See why I taped those lugs up because they're awfully close to each other. I'm gonna go ahead and get these landed and then we'll torque them down. All right, everything is landed. A torque wrench that measures in foot pounds isn't going to work on that. You are going to need something in inch pounds or Newton meters. So basically I just snugged them up. I've done enough of this where I know how tight they need to be. So we're good there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and feed the rest of these wires through the LL and get them landed on the 100 amp breaker. Same here, get these landed on the lugs and then we'll check back and look over it. And then we have one more set of wires that we need to run and then we can go ahead and energize this thing and connect it to the app. All right, now that all the power wires are terminated, there's one last thing we have to run before we can fire this thing up. And that's gonna be in this three quarter inch conduit. And what it is, it's a CT. And they give you these in the kit with the home smart panel, or whatever the hell it's called. Anchor Solix home power panel. So they give you two of these CTs. That is short for current transformers. And what they do is they measure current or amperage. Now from what I've read, this little transfer switch is the brains of the operation and it's pretty smart. So what it does is it picks up a reference voltage from the incoming line and it also takes a current measurement on your main utility panel. That's where we're gonna be installing these clamps. Now with those two input references, you can calculate anything using Ohm's law. But what the smart switch is going to do is calculate the power that it's using and outputting and all that good stuff. And that's gonna communicate with the Anchor Solix app, which we'll get into in a little bit. So anyways, I'm gonna push these wires through that three quarter inch conduit. And there are a couple of terminals here clearly labeled that these are gonna to connect to. And then I'll show you where we clamp these things onto in our main panel. All right, all of the wiring for now is done, except for moving our emergency circuits into the new panel. But let's take a look at what we've got here, starting at the power source. We've got a 100 amp breaker off of that, comes through and feeds the line side. Then out of the load side, comes down into our new emergency sub panel, feeds the main lugs on the sub panel. 
Everything is phased out. We've got a separate ground bar because it's a sub panel. Everything's looking good there. Then we have our current transformers. Now very important on these, there is an arrow that says source on them. Those arrows are pointed in the direction of current flow, which is going down into the panel. Your current is flowing into your panel all the way out to whatever devices or equipment is plugged into them. So make sure your arrows are pointed down. Very important. And I coiled up the excess wire in there and some excess wire in here as well. And those are both landed on their two ports in there marked one and two. There is one extra port in here. You see right in the back and that is marked solar. Anchor does give you another CT in the kit and that would wrap around your incoming solar wires or wire, I'm not sure. I know this video is boring. Freaking maniacs. Good rule of thumb before we go and energize this is to check continuity between all of your terminals. Make sure that whatever wire is landed is right and it's where it's supposed to be. Otherwise, when you turn that breaker on, it's gonna pop. So I'm just gonna verify with everything off, nothing's energized. A phase goes to A phase, B phase goes to B phase. We know our neutral buses are neutral. Everything looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and power this thing up, see what happens. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on. And then I'm going to check voltage here first. All right, I see some lights coming on. I've got grid, I've got backup load. I've got 245 volts, 245 volts. All right, voltage wise, everything looks good. All right, I now have everything connected. The F3800 is now connected to the home power panel. So everything is looking good. I had to do a couple of firmware updates, but we're good. So as far as the installation goes on the F3800 and the home power panel, that is it. Really not that bad of a setup if you're an electrician. Uh, it's pretty basic. So now all I have left to do is I'm going to move all of my critical circuits out of my main panel and put them into my emergency backup panel like fridges, freezers, the furnace, the blower for the fireplace, different lights and outlets. I might throw the air conditioning in there. So I'm gonna get all those circuits moved out of this panel and into this one. And then we could finally test the system out. We'll simulate a power loss and just see what happens. And we'll go over some of the other features that this home power panel offers. All right, I have all the circuits moved over into the new backup panel. You can see that clearly looks a lot better than this mess. Now I do plan on pulling all these circuits completely out of this panel. I'm gonna reroute all these cables, clean them up, make them look nice, and I'm gonna reland everything in this panel to make it look like this one. And don't forget this inch and a quarter nipple right here that goes between the two panels. If for some reason this home power panel or transfer switch fails, it fails open, which means I would not have any power going to my emergency backup panel which is all of my critical circuits. So if a situation like that was to happen, I would have this chase in between where I could quickly reroute some cables from this 100 amp breaker from my utility panel right in here and I could feed the main lugs so that I can get that powered up just like a normal sub panel and then I can totally isolate this one, remove it, replace it, whatever I gotta do. Just something to keep in mind if you're setting up a system like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw the cover on the backup panel and we'll start testing out the whole system. All right, everything's closed up, except for this one, of course. And just to show you briefly, we've got fridge, furnace, freezer, great room recepts, all a bunch of lighting, recepts, kitchen, computer stuff. Uh, we have the air conditioner on there. All of the critical loads that I want in there, it's all preference. I do want the AC in there. This unit will run the AC. I don't know for how long, I'll be uh, figuring that out in future testing, but I wanna make sure we have lights, outlets, all the things that we need to navigate around through the house when we have a power loss. Now you can see on the home power panel, you have an on off button right here. You have your Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. When that light is on, it's showing that you are connected. You have your grid, that light is powered because it's saying that we have power coming from the grid, which is coming from this 100 amp breaker right here. And then we have power station one, which means that Right here we are connected to power station one and there is another port underneath if we want to add a second F3800, which I do plan on doing that in the future. But because I don't have it, you can see that light is not illuminated. And then we have backup load. That light is on because it's telling us that the power is being sent to our backup panel. So right now we currently have power in that panel. 
and it's getting its power from the utility panel 100 amp breaker right there. Also on the side we have these breakers. This breaker is a disconnect for the power to our F3800. And same on the right side, that breaker is off because I don't have the power station number two hooked up, so that one's off. We also have a little antenna on top which flips down and flips up. Obviously you want it up, that's for your Wi-Fi signal. That hooks up to the Wi-Fi, that hooks up to the Wi-Fi, and that way you can communicate with both of these units through the app. And our F3800 is at 69%, and there's no input wattage right now, and that little icon in the bottom right corner shows that the F3800 is connected to the home power panel. Now there's a lot of information to cover on this whole system. Again, check out the website. I'll have links for that down in the description, along with a discount code that will save you some money. I wanna show you what this thing can do because this, in my opinion, is the most relatable situation that most people would be interested in, a system like this, which is home backup power. Yes, of course, you can use this with your RV. You can use it to charge your EV car. I'd have to say 90% of people aren't interested in either one of those things. They're more interested in home backup power and specifically automatic transfer. There are manual switches available. Anchor also offers a manual switch. I specifically wanted something that automatically transferred power, which this home power panel does. So as soon as I kill this 100 amp breaker, which is supplying the utility feed to the switch and then to the backup panel, as soon as I kill it, it's going to instantaneously switch over to the battery system so we'll never lose power. The more I dig into this thing, it's actually a really nice system. And we'll go over some of the other features here in a minute. But first, I want to test this thing out. All right, so I've showed you power station one is hooked up, backup load, grid. That light should shut off when I kill this breaker. All right, that light shut off. And we still have our backup load lit up. So now we should see some power usage, and we do. It shows that we're outputting 469 watts right now, and we have nine hours remaining. So let's take a walk around the house right now, and I'll show you what's all being powered up by the battery pack right now. All these lights. Girls. Hello. Their lights. We're gonna turn everything on so we can see what is powered up. And then we'll check. All right, all that stuff's powered up. Let's go upstairs. Bedroom lights, bathroom lights. Kitchen lights. Living room lights and all the beer staying cold. The freezer is powered up. I know the lighting's really bad right now. All right, with everything on, let's see how much power we're pulling now. 813 watts, it's showing we have five and a half hours remaining. So pretty cool, you can see once I killed that power, almost instantaneously, I bet it was a fraction of a second that we had power back to our backup power system automatically. And that is what I believe most people are interested in, a system like this. So pretty damn cool. And you can hop on your app and you can see right here, it'll actually show you a little house diagram and it shows the energy flowing from the power station to your panel. Or if it's the grid, it'll show it coming from the grid. Pretty cool. All right, I'm going to switch back to normal power. So the grid is back on. And then I think once it stabilizes for a little bit, you'll hear a click and that will actually transfer power from the battery to the grid again, which is pretty normal for an automatic transfer switch. Because right now it's still showing that we're pulling 836 watts, so it hasn't switched over yet. Give it a second. There we go. I saw the lights flicker a little bit, so there is a very quick transfer happening. All right, now that we are back on the utility power, you can see the energy coming from the grid and going to our panel again. Very cool. So as far as home backup, this is a great option. Automatic transfer, automatic transfer back. That's what I was looking for. But there's some other things that I didn't even realize that this system did. You can actually go in here to time of use, which is the mode that we're set up in. And you can hit utility rate plan and you can actually pick your off peak and on peak hours when demand is the highest 
the energy company actually charges you more per kilowatt hour. You can adjust the schedule in here to where your battery system will power your home or your backup panel during those peak hours and then it will charge itself through the power cord and the off peak hours like through the night and this feature will definitely save you some money especially accumulated over time and you can see right here the 60 40 that means that during those peak hours it will not allow the battery system to go below 40 percent that way i still have some energy in case we do lose power i still have 40 percent left now you can adjust that to whatever you want. I might actually bump that up to 50% so I still have 50% battery left in case of an outage. It's pretty nice to be able to manipulate all those different settings to whatever your preferences are. So we have the time of use mode, which allows you to adjust those peak hours. You have your automatic backup mode, which gives you power automatically during a power loss. And then you have the self-consumption mode. This mode I'm not gonna be using, but I'll give you a brief idea of what it is. If you have an existing solar system set up on your home, it can actually work in conjunction with the Anchor Solix home power panel and your battery system. Basically gives you the most efficient use out of it. They kind of all work together. Again, I don't have it, so I'm not familiar with it. And frankly, I'm still learning this whole system anyway. Now being that the home power panel can tie into your existing PV or solar setup that you might have. It's all able to do that because of the AC coupling technology that the home power panel features. So overall, this power panel is not just a transfer switch. It is way smarter, it's got way more technology, and it gives you way more benefits and features than just a typical basic transfer switch. It's a whole lot smarter than I am, that's for sure. I do plan on having some other videos after I get more familiar with the system and I can get some good data and see exactly what my savings are gonna be month to month. And I plan on sharing those videos with you as well. One day, I do plan on getting some solar panels and setting up that part of the system as well. Again, I'll make some videos on that too. But for now, that is gonna wrap it up for this one. I know this video got a little bit longer than I wanted to, but it is a lot of information to share. Hopefully this gives you a better idea of what's all involved in a system like this, what you can expect. Again, check out the links in the description. Discount code will save you some money. Please hit that like button if you found this one helpful. Subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.